Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial video, we'll be detecting text in Python using OpenCV and PyTesseract. Now, in order to accomplish OpenCV text detection using Python, we need to install some things first. The first thing is PyTesseract, and we can install that here on this website. The link will be in the description. All you have to do is install the correct version of PyTesseract for your operating system. And since I'm using Windows 64-bit, I'll be downloading this one right here. Once it's done installing, you will end up with this setup installation file. Just double click this, click next, click agree, choose which one you want, and click next. If you have to change anything, do it, then click next. This part is important. Make sure to remember the path that you install this folder in. After that, just click install. Once it's done installing, you can go ahead and click next and then finish. All right, the next thing to install is the PyTesseract module. So open up a terminal or command prompt. On Windows, you can go to the search bar and type in CMD and then click enter. I'm assuming you already have OpenCV installed, but if you don't, this is the command. But since I have OpenCV installed, I'll only be installing PyTesseract by typing PIP install PyTesseract. And after it's done installing, you can go ahead and close this window. Now we can actually start coding. So I just created a Python file in Sublime Text, but you can use any text editor you want, obviously. We can start by importing all the modules that we'll be using. So we can import OpenCV by typing import CV2. We'll also need PyTesseract, so from PyTesseract, import PyTesseract. Now we need to reference our PyTesseract executable file by typing PyTesseract.tesseract CMD equals and then the path of where you installed your PyTesseract executable file. But by default, it should be the same as mine if you're on Windows. Then we can start by reading in the image that we want to detect text on and this will be the image that we'll be using for the rest of the video. So now we create an image variable and we type cv2.mread and then the path to our image as a string. But if it's in the same directory as our Python file then we can just type the file name. Now we can create a new variable called words and set it to pytesseract.image to string and then we pass in the image here. What this function does is it will detect any text in the image that we pass here and it will store it as a string inside this variable. Then we can print our words variable and as you can see we get all the text from our image as an output. Alright cool but how do we draw a rectangle around each character in the image? Well we need to change this image to string function to image to boxes. We can also change the variable name so that it fits the return value of this function. Something like letter boxes. After that we can print the value of letter boxes to see what it contains. As we can see we get a line of output for each character and its bounding box coordinates. Now since we want to draw a rectangle around each character we need to iterate through each line in letter boxes by typing for box in letter boxes dot split lines. Now this box variable will be a string of the lines we saw earlier, but we want to convert it into a list with each of those elements we saw earlier as an item in the list. So we do this by typing box equals box dot split. Then we can print box and we see that as our output we get a list for each character and its bounding box information. Now we create four new variables x, y, width, and height, and we set each to be the correct coordinate. But remember Python lists start at zero and we want the second index. So x will be the second index of box, y will be the third, width will be the fourth, and height will be the fifth. Remember to convert them all to integers seeing as they started as strings in our box list. Now we can call the rectangle function to draw a rectangle around each character. The first argument is the image to draw the rectangle on, the second argument is a tuple of the starting x and y coordinates, the third argument is another tuple of the end coordinates, a fourth argument is a tuple of the color we want to make the rectangle in BGR format, and then the thickness of the rectangle. Now we can write c cv2.im show and pass in a random window name as a string and the image we want to display on the screen. We can then type cv2.wakey and pass 0 so that the image doesn't stop displaying. As you can see, there's something terribly wrong. Now what happened is that these y and height variables are reversed in a way. So we need to create two new variables here and make sure to add a comma at the end because the function that we'll be storing in here actually returns three values. The function is the image we're working with dot shape. This will return the height and width of our image in this order. Then we need to go back here and type height minus y and height minus h. When we run our code again, we see that it actually works this time. If we want to display the character that's inside the bounding box, we type cv2.putText and the image to put the text on, the text itself, so the first index of the box, a tuple of the x and y coordinates, the font we want to use, the scale of the text, then the color as a tuple in BGR format, and then the thickness of the text. When we run our code, we see that it works quite well and we can detect each character in our image. The last thing that we'll be doing is to draw a bounding box around each word in our image. Image. We do this by deleting all of this and changing this variable to something like image data and then changing this function to image to data. The first argument is our image as always, but this time we'll be adding a second argument. Output type equals output dot dict. But this might give you an error because we need to import output first by typing from pytesseract import output. Now we should be good. If we print image data, then we see all these different keys in our dictionary. Each of these keys store lists with information about each word that we detected. For example, if we print 
about image data text, then we see a list of all the words that we got detected. The word big is the fifth item in our list and is in index position four. If we go back to our image data and we now print left instead, then we get a list of all the X coordinates of our words. Now, if we remember, the word big was our fifth word detected and an index number four. That means that this value here will be the starting X coordinate of the bounding box for the word big. Now, that means if we want to draw a bounding box around each word in our image, we need to iterate through each word. So for I in word enumerate image data text, this I will keep track of the iteration number and it can't really work without enumerate. So that's why we add it here. We saw that a few words were empty strings, so we can ignore all those and type if word is not equal to an empty string. Then we want to create four variables, which will store the coordinates of our bounding boxes for this specific word. We can do this for each one by typing image data, the key we want, and then the index of the iteration. Then we draw a rectangle again, and you already know what all the parameters are, so I won't be explaining all of them, but at least we don't need to get the image width and height this time. We can just type x plus width and y plus height for our second tuple argument. Then we can create text again to display the word detected on top of the bounding box. When we run our code, we see that it works. I'm not sure what exactly happened here, but yeah, it works fairly well. And I hope that this video helped you. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any tutorial or video suggestions or ideas on how my tutorials could improve, then please let me know and I hope to see you in the next video.